All right, my friends. I was about to say we are live, coming to you live from the Philippines on this beautiful, hot and sunny day here just outside <clears throat> Subic Bay here in Barrio Barreto. Well, outside Barrio Barreto, I'm actually on the Subic side. But I'm not live. And there's a reason why I'm not live. There's actually a valid reason why I just decided to sit here in this chair and get drunk and talk to my main Sony camera. The FDR AX100. My big camera. I call it my big camera. My studio camera. And that's because, folks, there's a damn brownout. We just got in from Manila this morning at like 5.30. The whole brown guy's in a brownout. So, you know, we've been gone for a couple days. So I, I checked the ref and everything in the ref is cold. The ice is still in the freezing unit. So I'm like, all right, well, it only went out uh, a little while ago. <clears throat> so we're good to go. You know, usually, the brownouts here in Subic, they last like an hour or so. Just reached into that cooler. I said I wasn't gonna drink this shit, but it's all I got on hand. It was either this or nothing. So anyhow, I, uh, where was that? I checked the freezer. The ice was still ice. Everything was still cold. But then I talked to our friend next door. She's like, no, they put it on, uh, they put it out there that it's going to be off from 5 to 5, 12 hours today. So basically all, all day long, there's no, no electricity. And folks, it's a hot, sunny day. Luckily, we've got a little bit of clouds rolling through right now to kind of block out some of this beating down hot sun. I do got a little bit of a cool breeze blowing through. It's perfect weather. I can't complain. But in the middle of the day, it does get, it gets pretty damn hot. You don't have to entirely batten on the hatches and fire up an air conditioner, but it'd be nice to have a fan on the on these hot sunny days. We came in from this trip from Manila. We weren't able to stay at our normal <sighs> fucking bug in my glass. We weren't we weren't stay able to stay at our normal hotel. So much just in there like on a fucking spider's web. All right, now you're out of there. Now you're. You're gone, motherfucker. Be gone. So we had to stay at one hotel one night, and then we stayed at a normal hotel the next night over to Cool Martin. And in the melee, folks, I couldn't, I didn't have time to get anything charged, right? And when you, when you think about all the electronic gadgets you have, okay, all right, number one is your cell phone. And that was the only thing that I did charge uh, last night and the night before. Number two, you got a power bank. Okay, I've got multiple cameras. I got a laptop, an iPad Pro. I mean, I've literally, what have I got? Seven, eight devices that have to stay charged. <clears throat> so, because we were displacing and we had shit to do, whatever, I didn't have time to break out everything, get everything charged up. So, this morning when we rolled in here, I had like 20% battery life left on my iPhone. The damn power bank was totally depleted. And let's see what else. Oh shit, this camera might be getting too hot. Oh fuck, that's getting too hot. Hold on, I gotta reposition. This thing's about to melt. Okay, I had to reposition the camera because uh, it doesn't matter if I get too hot, I just drink more beer, sweat it out, but. This camera has got to be under cover, so I had to get it underneath the umbrella here out of the direct sunlight. Hopefully that thing's cooling down. Yeah, it's a fucking champion. Yeah, so I came in here this morning. Everything was dead. Everything, uh, I had a little bit of battery life on my MacBook Pro. <clears throat> I downloaded some footage. That thing went dead. My iPhone went dead. Uh, my power bank is dead. Basically, all of my gadgets were dead. Except for the iPad Pro. But 
I don't have Wi-Fi on it, so the only I checked the downloaded videos from YouTube, and I had some Christmas music. So I'm sitting here rocking out fucking Christmas music on a Bluetooth speaker that's got about 50% charge on it, and I'm just fucking enjoying life out here on this balcony, you know. The kids are downstairs with the ladies. They're down there, you know, doing gossip and we call it chismas here in the Philippines. They're just down there talking and hanging out, having a good time. And I really plan on all day long editing two videos and getting those uploaded and it's just not going to happen. So I was sitting out here, I drank a couple beers and the only reason they're cold because the ice in the freezer is still ice. So we got the beers, put them on the ice. Um, now I got the ice dumped in the cooler. So I got cold beer, but I'm not going to have electricity for, um, you know, it's a 12 hour run without electricity. So I said, what the hell can I do? I said, holy shit, my studio camera has got a full charge. And this old, this old Sony, this old Sony 4K, not my original Sony that I talk about. But this, this big camera, it's got a huge battery on it and the shit lasts forever. So I said, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to rock this Christmas music until the iPad and the Bluetooth speaker go down. <clears throat> and then I'll just continue to talk to this camera and I guess the subject at hand is okay when you come to places like the Philippines you have to deal with routine brownouts and when I say routine some places they are routine like back in the day in Cebu City there was called a rolling brownout which would mean like for I don't know what the time hacks were, but like four to six hours in the morning, the, the west side of the city had no power, and they would shift it where the east side had power and the west side didn't. So every day, sections of the city would would not have power, and they call that a rolling brownout, basically to save electricity, to not stress out the, the generators and the resources available. Now down on uh, some of the islands, where they had like two generators for the entire island. Every day there was a brownout where they changed over the generators or they refuel the generators. So you're looking at four to six hours of, of no electricity. Now the good thing about those situations was, and were, whatever, that you knew the times. It became a, a normal routine as to when they, they refueled or changed over the generators. So you knew exactly what time it was you knew how to plan and, and prepare and just uh, you did other things when the electricity wasn't available. And nobody's meat in their freezer, beer went cold because it was just such a time, uh, a short time. Now living here in Subic, I mean it's occasional short brownout, just short time frame. It's pretty stable here, but not as stable on the Barrio Barreto side of the river. Because I came through Barrio Barreto this morning, everybody's got power. You cross the river, boom, now you're on Subic power. There's no electric. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's like that old saying, when you don't have resources, you, come be, you become resourceful. So today, I don't have any electricity, but you know what I got? I got fucking free sunshine coming down. I do have some ice left over, so I have the ability to, to have cold beer. Um, so I said, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to work on my tan today. I'm going to drink cold beer, I'm going to work on my fucking tan, and I've got a, a little solar thing over here charging. It's like a little short strand of uh, Christmas lights on a solar little panel. I got that thing over there charging, so if they don't get the power on tonight, guess what? I got night lights all night long, my friends, courtesy of uh, this star we call the sun. And the babies and the ladies, they've just been chilling downstairs where it's cool, talking to people, hanging out. You know, there's no problem about getting some food because most people cook with gas, so it didn't interrupt the, uh, the availability for them to get some pants and some other stuff because uh, the folks are cooking with gas. Hey, sweetie. My sweetie's got food all over her face. What you been eating, girl? 
So everybody's having a good time, folks. Just making the best of the day. You know, we don't necessarily have to have electricity to survive, especially on a short-term basis. We just make the best of it. This morning when we came through the barangay, everybody's got candles lit selling their, their goods. Sorry Sorry stores are still open by candlelight. And I think I saw one or two that had some solar lights that had some proper lighting. And what you see is, and what I've seen is down on the islands, the smaller islands where you have a daily rolling brownout. A lot of people down there have invested in solar because it's their business. So the brownout hits, it don't matter. They got solar lights, you can see their products, you can see their wares, their, their foodstuffs and everything. They can continue cooking because they have a gas burner. <clears throat> so I think in the West, we, you know, when you're living in the West and the electricity goes out, it's like a life or death situation. And the rest of the world, it's not because they're used to, a lot of places are used to living without electricity. It's not devastating. I remember a funny moment. I was in Iraq and we were with our, an Iraqi buddy of ours, just a local citizen. And we were trying to eat dinner in this, uh, you know, just a fucking wood hut. You know, on the, uh, where the hell we're at? We're on Camp Baharia. And the electricity went out. It was pitch black. We were like mid, you know, it was like six of us sitting in there eating. And so the, the electricity goes out. It's pitch black. And like a, a couple seconds, like, you know, we Americans are like, what the fuck? We're looking for flashlights, whatever. Then all of a sudden you hear, and it's my buddy. My local Iraqi buddy, he's got a fucking cigarette lighter, lights it up, and he's still shoveling food in with, uh, with the other hand. It was fucking classic. I mean, you had to be there to appreciate how fucking funny it was. But it just went totally black. Everybody's like, what the fuck, blah, blah, blah. Just smiling. Because he's used to it. He's used to that shit, you know? <clears throat> On the camp, we were running off of generators with millions of dollars in financing. He was living out in Fallujah where fucking electricity goes out at that time quite frequently. So anyhow, uh, I did a video before, it didn't get a lot of traction, but I talked about like three pieces of, of gear that I recommend you buy if you plan on island hopping in the Philippines. Not so much Thailand, but maybe Cambo. Uh, you know, any of these places in the world where the electricity, the electrical grid is not solid. And number one is a, is a fucking headlamp. Now, yes, your cell phone has a, a flashlight on it. Okay, got it. Tracking. But two things. Number one, if you're facing a brownout of an unknown determined amount of time, do you really want to use... <clears throat> the last battery life from your iPhone because you need a flashlight? And the answer is no. You want to fucking preserve that battery in case of brownout for two, three days so you can communicate, right? And number two, it's a pain in the ass trying to hold any type of flashlight and conduct business. But you strap that headlamp on, little fucking headlamp. Now you can use both hands. It's too easy. And when my old man came and visited, I recommended that they get one. They just picked up some little cheap ones at fucking Walmart. They left them with us. They're still running. They're not rechargeable. They're not fancy. They're dirt cheap. But the headlamp I have is by Phoenix. I'll put a link down in the description. Now, it's rechargeable and it's waterproof. You know, it's one of those where I bought quality once and it's going to last a long time and it's reliable. Uh, instead of buying, you know, a six-pack of Walmart little headlamps. So it's the Phoenix. I think it's the something 90. Fuck it. I'll, I'll put the link down there if you're interested. But it works out real well for me. It's got like four brightness settings. And if you put it on the lowest setting, it lasts, you know, it fucking lasts all night. You just plug it in the next day. And so I'm down with that rechargeable headlamp. Great product. And... So that's one product I, I've recommended people bring if they're, you know, traveling the overstay road on the cheap and hitting places where the, the electrical grid is not solid. 
Uh, number two is some type of little solar light. Now, I've got a solar light light right here, but it's a strand of uh, Christmas lights, but that thing lasts all night long. If you leave the little, it's only about that square, a uh, solar panel in the sun all day, direct sunlight, it's gonna last all night. So even if the electricity goes out, we still got a nice bright room uh, lit up by this strand of Christmas lights. And, and it was like five fucking, five bucks, and it's light. It's packable. Mm. It's light, so I used to carry this little small one, and it's on that previous video. You know what? Matter of fact, I'll put the link to that video. It was a little light that had like six LEDs on one side and a solar panel on the other. So during the day, you just flipped it over outside, and at night, you turned it on, it would last all night. And the cool thing about that was, is when Okay, say you're on, you're island hopping, you're in a room, and like 6 o'clock at night, you decide to go kick it out for the night. Well, I leave that little solar light on in the room. That way, if the damn power goes, goes out, and I roll back in at 12 o'clock, half fucking drunk, it's lit up the room. The, the room is lit up. I can fucking see. You know, now the ideal thing is take your headlamp with you, and you come back, you got this little solar light lighting up the room. And that's, that's, uh, that's what I would do. I uh, ended up giving that little thing away to Fatima's grandma because grandma thought it was fucking magic. Every night, as soon as it got dark, she would just be like, hey, can, can you turn on your solar? So she could turn off the, the, the lights and save the electric bill. Which is kind of funny because grandma's electric bill was like $5 a month, still like five bucks a month. But she loved that thing. So grandma got uh, got my little solar, little portable light. Ah oh, shit, and there was one more. Oh, I, I think the other one on the video is a small power bank. And I have this RAV Extreme. It's also waterproof, water resistant. Boom, I'll put that link down there, unless I'm too lazy. You gotta, if, if I'm too lazy and the links aren't there, just click on that travel resources. It's over on that page of my website. But we have this little power bank and it has a tiny light on it. But the good thing about that light is it'll last for days off of that power bank. It's like a 10,000 milliamp power bank. But if you're just using that little lamp, it'll fucking last for days. Typhoon bro rolls through. As long as you've got that power bank charged, you've got a light until, until you get out of there, until the power gets restored. So those are the three items. A, a rechargeable headlamp, solar powered little light of some sort and a power bank with a light not the ones without the light one with a little bitty led light because it will last for a long time yeah so um i don't even know where i was going with that but yeah so i'm maximizing my time um I think that I could probably sit here and talk to this camera. I think this camera would probably run for two and a half hours at least before the battery died. And I don't know if I can talk that long because I don't, I gotta make a beer resupply. But if I can get the attention of wife number one to keep going down there and put me some beers in this cooler on this ice, I'm just gonna keep talking because I'm maximizing my time, maximizing the available electricity that I have at hand and it's coming down to a Bluetooth speaker and iPad Pro and this here camera. So I think the Bluetooth speaker will be the next thing to go and I'll just fucking, you know, turn the iPad off. And I take that back. You know what? I do have like three GoPro batteries charged so I've got another hour of uh, filming. So in case the zombie apocalypse starts right now during my brownout, I do have the, uh, the GoPro Hero 8 Black on standby. But this is kind of a lesson. I mean, you should always keep all your gadgets charged, but especially if you're traveling, no matter how inconvenient it is, you know, if you're only gonna be at a place for a few hours, you don't wanna bust out the chargers, take the fucking time and do it. <laughs> Especially if you're trying to run a goddamn YouTube channel like me. 
I didn't then take the time to charge all my gadgets, and then I come home and I got no electricity. I'm just losing a day, a day of work. <clears throat> I said, fuck it, I might go mountain climbing. But I really haven't slept for two days. Um, being in these hotel rooms, sometimes the babies just don't adapt to that new environment or they're not down with the environment or the sleeping arrangements and they don't sleep a good night's sleep. So the first night we were in this kind of smaller room. It wasn't ideal conditions and the ladies got some sleep but I basically stayed up all night watching over the kids make sure they don't uh, you know, get into anything, wake up, crawl over, try to get in, into anything. So I didn't get any sleep the night before. The night before that, I got drunk over in Angeles City. And then last night, we all three laid down for just a few hours before it was time to roll out. My buddy Dawn picked us up at like 2 in the morning. So we zoomed through Manila, zoomed on back up here to Barrio Barreto, which was great. We didn't have to sit in no fucking traffic, but... This dude right here is like a pseudo zombie after three days straight of no fucking sleep, plus one day in there partying. Um, so maybe this day with no electricity is good for me. I just sit here, work on my tan, drink some beer, and maybe even take a cat nap, which I just can't do. You know, I'm, you know, my grandfather never took a fucking nap during the day. Basically, he said, you know, sleep, and the nighttime is for sleeping. You know, during the day, it's time to work. So even if I wanted to go in there and lay down and take a nap, my, my programming just don't allow me to do so. And my Filipina, shit, that bitch can sleep anytime, anywhere with no remorse. It don't matter if everybody there is fucking pouring concrete. Unless you light a fire under her ass, she'll fucking go, go to bed and go to sleep on a damn bamboo hut while everybody's working. Ain't no, ain't no shame in her game about sleeping. But for me, it's just so damn difficult to sleep during the work day, during the day, you know. Back when I was a young cop and I got stuck on night shift, which from time to time you do. Some people actually like night shift graveyard shift, whatever you want to call it, midnights, and I did enjoy it, the aspect of working midnights, because, you know, if you work the day as a cop, you deal with, you have to be politically correct, everybody complains on your ass, you're dealing with fucking politicians, evening watch is kind of busy, like 3 to 11, it's busy as shit, it's a combination of the two, but if you work midnights where you come in at like 11 p.m. and get off at 7 a.m. or if you work you know 7 p to 7 a that shift right there the majority of who you con come in contact with are up to no good and so you have less bullshit more action if the action happens so a lot of guys like working night shift you know working the midnight shift I enjoyed it as well. Plus, there's no traffic. You fucking zoom from point A to point B. Uh, you know, a lot of pluses to it. Plus, it's not so fucking hot. You're wearing goddamn body armor and carrying all this fucking gear like Batman. It's so much cooler. But the downside of working nights with any job is you fucking go home. By the time you get home, the sun's up. And your biological rhythm your circadian rhythm it doesn't tell you it's time to go to bed when that sun comes up your body tells you it's time to wake up because we're not fucking nocturnal people humans are not nocturnal by nature so i would basically be sleepy as shit by the time the end of the shift was over because it's dark you just want to pass out and go to sleep when the sun comes up when you're when you're on the way home you're wide fucking awake and what I did when I was working down in South Florida, I had a routine for a while. When I was on, uh, we call it morning watch. In other words, midnight shift. I would get off, I think, 6.30 or 7. 
Anyhow, I would drive to Fort Lauderdale Beach, park my car, and I would get out and run. I would run up, up, down the beach, whatever. Like two, three kilometers, I ran back. Then I went for a swim in the ocean. And then when I went home, I would get in my car and go home. Then I would bike. I would get on my fucking mountain bike and I would ride to the farthest pool in the neighborhood. I would go swimming, get some sun. I would ride my bike back. And then I would be tired enough, you know, probably by that time it's around fucking noon, to try to lay down in my darked out room that basically what a lot of folks do, what I did, you take tin foil and put it over the windows. You know, you black out all the light in a room. You lay down at like 12 noon, just blacked out room, and then pray that you get, for me, pray that I got two or three hours of sleep because my rhythm is just fucked up. So for five days out of the week back then, I was sort of, you know, from say four in the morning, you're, you're like a walking zombie. You're like a, just a fucking zombie. Just can't remember shit. You know, especially working as a cop, the action dies down about three. So from three to seven, your only job is to fucking stay awake. You know, and it was fucking horrible. You're just trying to stay awake. You want to sleep, and then when it's time to go home, oh yay! But the fuck, here comes the fucking sun. Now your your body's fucked up. So that's where I'm, where I'm at right now. Three days of really no sleep. It's sunshine coming down. I feel like a fucking zombie. There's no way I can sleep. So I said, fuck it. I will work on my tan. I will drink cold beer. I will talk to this camera, to my friends out there uh, around the world. And just talk about various subjects like that. When I worked that schedule, um, at that particular time, I was working five days on and two days off. And really, I only slept on my two off days, and I would sleep at night. So if I got off on my Friday, it was 7 in the morning, I'd go fucking fishing on my boat on the One Muff Diver. And late that night, I'd drag my ass in, and I would sleep like a fucking rock all night. And the same thing the next night. And then for the next five days during the work week, I was just a fucking zombie with no sleep. So... I guess there's a lesson to this and to the average person that if you if you're out past 11 and you come in contact with any any police officer you know real police officer I'm not talking about fucking FBI shitheads and fake I say fake folks real cops real cops fucking are your local cops your county sheriff's deputies the, the state and the federal level they, you guys aren't real cops we know this okay I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings. But I'm talking about if you come in contact with a real cop who works midnight shift, realize that that dude may be a grumpy motherfucker because he hasn't slept in three, four days because his rhythm is just not down to where he can get a get an excellent night's sleep. And so you want to be extra fucking nice to that dude and respectful merely because it's just human nature that He's not getting enough sleep, working that fucking schedule. And you start running that fucking mouth for no reason in front of a dude that ain't slept good in three days. It's, you know, it's just not a good combination for either one of you. Have some understanding. That's what I'm trying to say. Have some understanding for the gentleman working the graveyard shift and trying to fucking grind it out. So that's that's how I feel right now. Feel like I'm back in fucking midnight shift, three day hunt hangover, fucking zombie, what have you. But folks, I like I like to fucking make lemon. No, I like to take lemons and make lemonade. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm fucking salvage the day. Instead of chopping videos and editing all day, I'm just talking to this camera, working on my tan. Listening to fucking Christmas music because for some reason that's the only thing I had downloaded on that iPad. And I think the reason I did it because it was putting the babies to sleep at night. So I ain't got no kid rock to jam out to. Here with my Bose wireless speaker. 
All right, so what else, what else is going on in the world? Well, all kind of shit going on in the world, I guess, my friends. And from my little balcony right here, from my fucking kingdom, right here in the Philippines and Southeast Asia. Right now, I just don't give a fuck. I don't, I don't give a fuck. And, and you got to take that for... How do I explain it? Folks, if I was glued to CNN or Fox News 24-7, like most Americans, it would not impact anything that's going on in the world today. By me merely watching the fucking news, I'm not affecting anybody. I'm not affecting anybody's decisions. I'm not affecting world events. Okay, if you just sit there and watch TV and listen to the world's, you know, negativity and the woes, you're not affecting anything. I mean, yeah, your, you know, knowledge is a certain type of power. But you watch TV every night and just gripe at the TV. Nobody gives a fuck, and you're not affecting anything. And so, I like to think of my dude, you know, think of me as I'm a, I'm a guy that takes action. I'm not for a fucking afraid to take a risk and take some action and be a dissenting opinion when I feel strongly about something. I'm not afraid of that. But when I'm not there, I'm not in the system anymore. I'm, I'm not there to be in people's faces and protest or vote or do any of that shit. It doesn't behoove me to fucking glue myself to the situation because I'm not going to affect any change with the lifestyle that I'm living. Now, I guess I could turn my YouTube channel and my subscriber base into a political show. I do have a platform to put my opinion out there, but that's just not, that's just not what makes me happy these days, folks. What's going to make me happy right now is to call Filipino wife number one and tell that beautiful vixen to get downstairs to the store, get me a couple more beers, get them on this ice uh, because I'm up here sweating talking to this camera, you know? Let me check the heat on this thing. Oh no, it's straight. The good thing, folks, all right, let's talk about cameras for a minute. You know, a lot of folks watch me, they're thinking about starting a YouTube channel or they have a small YouTube channel. Um, this big camera, and although it's a very big camera, you know, to be vlogging on and carrying around, the good thing about this big camera, it don't fucking overheat. It don't overheat, it don't glitch. This thing will record 4K until the cows come home or the battery dies or the memory card is filled up. And that's a good thing about uh, shooting on a camcorder. Plus I got a hell of a damn zoom on here. Right now I'm plugged in with, a, uh, with an external lavalier mic. Very good quality mic, so the audio should be fucking stellar. Unless I fucked up the manual levels, which from time to time I do. But I bought this camera about a year ago, and I really haven't used it to its potential or uh, enough as I should. And I kind of fell in this trap recently. You know, I was looking about six months ago, I was looking at a Panasonic GH5S. But Panasonic has one major flaw that leads me not to gravitate to their ecosystem and not recommend it to anybody and it's you're paying two thousand to four thousand dollars for a fucking camera that can't autofocus folks my motherfucking iphone can autofocus my dji osmo pocket can autofocus this camcorder can autofocus you mean to tell me that panasonic one of the top of the line cameras with the most specs the most features they can't get the one fucking simple thing right and it's called focus motherfucker focus they can't get it right it doesn't work so i was like looking at the specs on this s1h which is basically like a panasonic gh5 gh5s 
fucking combined on steroids. I mean, it's an awesome beast, big ass camera. And if I was a rich dude, I would probably pull the trigger. But here's the problem. The few guys that have it, and they've posted videos on their YouTube channels about it, half the time they're fucking out of focus. I'm sitting there looking at the screen like, focus, 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 motherfucker, focus. You're a $4,000 camera with a $2,000 lens. $6,000 motherfucking dollars to shoot 6K footage. And you can't fucking focus. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. And so when I, when I watch these videos and these motherfuckers are talking about how great this shit is because they're trying to get you to click their affiliate link. And they make 4% off of a $6,000 purchase on Amazon or was it B&H Photo. We all do this. Everybody here on YouTube or on their blog, we're, all we are, we're online fucking salesmen trying to take a commission off of the products that we're selling. So I see these dudes out there who went out and bought this $4,000 Panasonic S1H and you know, it's probably spent a couple grand on the on the glass, the lens, unless they already had something that would work. And they're shooting fucking YouTube videos, handheld, and they're not in focus. It's focusing on the fucking background or that fucking tree over there. Panasonic, what the fuck? It's like you got the best camera in the world, but why the fuck can't a camera? autofocus and you say oh well you know if you're a professional cinematographer videographer whatever you don't use autofocus all right no shit i got that fucking aspect but this is the year 20 fucking 20. four thousand dollars with the technology and the and a fucking camera can't autofocus there's no excuse for that there is absolutely no fucking excuse for that my iphone can focus Okay, my fucking camera from 10 years ago can focus. A camera that came out in 2019 that's 4,000 fucking dollars without the lens ain't much better than a GH5 when it comes to focusing. Uh, that's why I'm not gonna pull the trigger on a Panasonic because everything else is great. The, the ergonomics of it, the usability, everything else is perfect. But I'm not giving you four fucking grand for a camera that don't goddamn focus in the year 2020, Panasonic. Ain't gonna happen. And to be honest, this old Sony right here, when I say old Sony, it's, it's several years old, but it's a 4K camera. She's 4K 24, 4K 30, doesn't do 60 frame. But this whole camera is a fucking, it's great. The autofocus ain't perfect like my, my really old Sony, but it's pretty damn good. And this camera all in is what, like less than 1500 bucks? I don't know what it's at now. But it's damn sure not 6,000. And oh, by the way, can't focus. Okay, anyhow, enough of that. Shit, folks, I'm getting fucking cooked. I'm getting fucking cooked right here by the sun coming down. I gotta fucking move out here. I gotta fucking move myself under this motherfucker. And let me get my beer settled. I'll be right back. Alright, so I got myself under there. I realize I'm gonna be a, a little bit backlit, but you know what? Who doesn't want to look at a beautiful palm tree with coconuts and a mountain over there and my old lady and our, our fucking household laundry? It's fucking beautiful. Colorful. You know? So even though I'm a little dark right here, don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure you can still hear my voice pretty well. But the bottom line of that little rant was I'm not I'm not going for a Panasonic S1H until they figure out how to make their million dollar camera do a simple task such as autofocus. If they fix the autofocus, then I will swap to Panasonic. I like everything about it, the specs, the ergonomics, the uh, the design, uh, but why pay somebody that much money when a fucking camera won't do what a twenty dollar camera will do? 
Okay, enough about the Panasonic. Right now, again, I'm rocking a Sony FDR AX100. Old big camera, but you know what? I'm sitting out here in 90 something degree heat. And this thing is a little bit warm. Well, it's getting hot, but it's still fucking rocking. And I promise you, it's not gonna glitch like the GoPro. This thing will fucking motor through it. If I look at the time, oh shit, I've stopped the clip a few times, so I'm not real sure where we're at, how much time. But anyhow, folks, I'll go ahead and conclude this rambling hodgepodge video of different topics. Here on this day where I'm enjoying this brown out, listening to fucking Christmas music. Holy shit, my speaker's out there in the sun about to melt. I gotta run, folks. I gotta get this shit out of the sun. But if you're not a subscriber, bottom right hand corner of your screen, I think it's right in there. There's a little overstay road sign. If you click that, something's gonna come up and say subscribe, and then you're supposed to hit a fucking bell. I don't fucking know. There, just, just click on that and play with it. Get on board with my channel, food, beer, visas. Sometimes bad behavior, because I'm trying to clean up my act a little bit. Uh, cooking shows. I'm chilling with my babies and my ladies and just trying to enjoy life here in Southeast Asia, my friends. Hope you're having a great day wherever you're out in the world. I'll see you on the next video, live stream, fucking premiere video. Whatever we decide to crank out for your entertainment. Peace out, my friends. Find this damn button. Oh, there it is. I'm out.